Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming to you this week for reasons I can't quite fathom myself from the old port town of Jaffa in Israel. Coming up, precision shooting. Jamie has no hands, but look at him handle a shotgun. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. First, crows gone lead free for the chicks. Just like giving up sweets for Lent, Crow has given up lead for Roy. The Lord of the Raptors has asked Captain Crow if he'd shoot some pigeons lead free. The reason Roy is currently knee deep in baby goshawks. Cute, fluffy peregrines and they love meat, which is expensive. But Roy can't risk these high speed, highly strung, fast metabolising baby birds ingesting even the smallest trace of lead. So he reckons a good source of free wild protein is a steel shot woody. Genius! That's why we are on a young pea crop with some special delivery game bore steel. As everyone knows, Roy's well into his birds. Uh, that's not the women variety, that's the uh, feather variety birds. Um, and he's asked me to see if I can shoot a few pigeons uh, with steel, because then he can feed them to his, uh, his young birds. So that's the plan today. I've got some uh, number five super steel from Game Ball. Uh, just going to give him a bash and try and knock him down a, well, if we can get a dozen, 15, it'd be nice. Some people like the steel, some people don't. I used to use the steel and I used to do a lot of wild family. And this is what I used to use, so it's quite nice. But um, the only thing is you, you can't put it through a tight choke. I know people that do, but uh, they recommend you don't. So if they recommend you don't, you don't. That's why I look at it. But no, I'm putting it through half choke today. Be interesting to see how it goes. Be nice to knock a few down for old Roy. And he sets out the hide from the pheasant pen behind us so he can shoot above, in front and side to side. The other day I looked, there was probably 100, 150 here. Chaffee Farms, it's been complaining about the pigeons. I don't think it's pigeons that are eating it. I think it's, uh, they've got a few P and bean weevil on it. So I think that's what the problem is, not pigeon. But I thought I'd come and give it a go for a couple of hours. They're supposed to be rough tomorrow. But they do talk about some heavy showers coming. There's been a few go through over London. There's a few over there now. You see there's one shower, there's another one just coming. If it rains, well, we get wet. UK Shoot Warehouse has been sending Andy loads of stuff to test, but his favourite toy is the ultra lightweight magnet, especially with the added length. Today I've got one of uh, UK Shoot Warehouse's lightweight machine, which I've fallen in love with, because it's a good, nice, lightweight machine. I rung up and asked if they did extension arms to take it out longer because I, I like the whirly with long arms. They've rung up and they've, uh, they've sent me some arms, which are, what are they there? One, two, about three, just over three and a half foot longer than a normal arm. So it's made it that much wider, which I prefer myself. I put tape on the arms, it just stops it from shining. Because um, every time it goes round it glints. Half the time you can't see it when you're back in the hide, but the pigeons can see it when they're up there looking down onto it. Looking down onto it, eh? No, there's an idea. Let's do just that. The hide's there. As you can see, there's a gap here, right where I want to be shooting. So I'm hoping the birds are going to come along and pull into here and pull to this big clump of trees. That's the plan. I'll have that whirly out that side with the wing coming in that way. They tend to come along here. And if they're going to make to the rotary machine, they come through there like that. And they're right in front where I want to shoot them. And the aim is to get, keep a hole here with two patterns either side. Keep the hole here so that they, they come into the hole or channel into where you want them. That said, it doesn't take long for Andy to change his mind and move the magnet diagonally to the top left-hand corner as the birds weren't clocking it. The strong wind is making them fly lower across the top edge of the field. 
Within moments, a stock dove illustrates just what Andy is hoping for. The newly repositioned whirly first catches the attention, and then the open area in the target zone offers a clear landing spot. Stock doves are, of course, protected. The last thing is the decoys themselves and their new skins or silo socks. Not novelty footwear, instead a durable cover to breathe life into the tiredest looking decoy. But you will need a paintbrush. This is one of my old decoys, it's been laying in the shed for a while. It's just a case of uh, shredding it over like a sock. Because they're old, old, old decoys, I need to paint the white on their neck because that is quite important. On this one it's not too bad, the white's still there. We just touch these up so that the white's there. You've got the, the, the wing bars that are white. They do home in on that, they see that. There you go. Right, let's get shooting. Initially, it's pretty quiet. It's not until about 3.30 that things get a move on, but Andy has to work for his birds. He shoots well. Here are two of three birds that made up a raspberry ripple. Andy is just not missing, and Ruby is so fast out of the hide she isn't missing anything either. Andy was sceptical about the steel, but as long as the birds are sub 45-ish yards, they are killing the pigeons nicely. Yeah, I am. I, I, like I say, I used steel when I was out on, on the estuary on the ducks. Uh, I know how it does perform. you just got to know your limits with it and not shoot too far. But like I say, I've shot some, shot some nice ones. I had a, a raspberry ripple there earlier. Um, I had a couple of pairs, a couple of doubles. Uh, um, yeah, I've had some nice shots. All right. Just got to get them pellets right up the front end. It seems to fold them up all right. Yeah, I'm impressed with it. Yeah. I'm not saying I want to use it all the time, because uh, when you want to shoot some long range stuff, like the uh, Pigeon Extreme, right, that's what I've been using. And there's been, I could have had a few more if I'd had those, because I would have stretched the barrels onto them. So, like I say, you've got to know your limit with uh, the steel. But you're only doing this for Roy anyway. Yeah, I am, yeah. I wouldn't be using them all the time. I'm only using them because Roy wants a few birds for his uh, hook bill, so... Um, yeah, they've come quite nicely here today. they come better than I thought they were going to, so... That's the reason I stuck with the steel. The birds have decoyed well, some better than others. Cameraman David is still picking feathers out of his teeth. Ah! The big question today is, does steel kill? And will the ultra lightweight rotor with added reach and therefore weight plus battery stay the distance? It's always a worry. You've got the longer arms on it. It takes a lot more to drive it, but I've still only got a little dry cell battery on there and um, that Kelda sent me down. And uh, yeah, it's working really well. But as you've seen on the, the video and today, the amount of pigeons that have tried to come to it, I still reckon they prefer the longer arms. I don't know if you've videoed earlier, I've done... I if you videoed earlier. Um, still a few pigeons back, eh? Before the heavens open, we start packing up. Crow picks 42 birds for 47 shots. Amazing shooting given that steel just doesn't hit as hard as lead. But if there's any doubt that steel kills, Crow has shown that it most definitely does. And this lead-free meat will soon be feeding Roy's precious babies. Oh, little, little birdie wordies. Well done, Andy, feeding the world's raptors there. He does a lot of work for charity, but he doesn't like to talk about it. Or as they say around here, if charity costs nothing, why isn't the world full of philanthropists? Now, from a saint to a sinner, from a schmo to a schmuck, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The UK government didn't mention repeal of Tony Blair's ban on hunting with dogs in the Queen's speech. Hunts are nervous that the Conservative Party receives so much help from pro-hunting canvassers at general elections, it doesn't want to repeal the ban and risk losing the support. However, Environment Secretary Lynn Truss said the vote to repeal the ban would take place before 2012 and that it was a Conservative Party manifesto commitment. A stalker from Northumberland came across this scene when he was out lamping. Lee Hornsby unhooked the animal and it ran off. 
he posted the video on the Deer Stalkers UK Facebook group. More trapped animals. A woman out exercising her hunter became trapped after a gate designed to open for riders swung back on her. Laura Palin from Cheshire was entering a bridle path when the gate wedged itself between Laura and her horse's stirrup. An experienced rider, she was dragged forward pulling the entire gate out of the ground and causing her to fall off from her mount. The horse was uninjured and Laura broke three toes. The anti-baiting Czech model is back. Michaela Fialova, on the left, has been hosting deer and wild boar stalking for Larissa Switlik, who has been in the Czech Republic for the World Carp Classic. Larissa has her own series on US television. They attracted the attention of local TV too. Must be because they're such good shots. And finally, a jewellery shop in New Jersey, USA, had an unexpected break-in. A deer crashed through its store front window. Surveillance video shows it crawling under jewellery cases, making a few laps of the shop and finally exiting through another window. However, the deer was later hit by a car and killed. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for fat. Thank you, David. Let's see what you lot have been up to now. It is Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, it's Andy here from North Wales. I uh, just thought I'd share the scenery here, some of this uh, in the daylight at least anyway, because it's normally dark, doing a bit of foxing. But, uh, but yeah, this is uh, up in sunny North Wales, beautiful day today. Hello Charlie, Matt here from New Zealand. And Emma, I'm here with my dad and we've just got ourselves a nice little grey duck. And Amber's doing her job of not retrieving. Cheers, keep up the good work. Hello Charlie, it's Danny here from Holdover TV. Just in work on this rainy bank holiday weekend. Beautiful Wimbledon Lake in Exmoor. Keep an eye out for them poachers. Take it easy. Hello Charlie, Adam in Hereford here. Out with the air rifle after months of being away. 10 minutes into the hunt, lovely doe, happy days. Hello Charlie, Bruce here on uh, holiday in Australia. Just bagged this piece. But, um... Nice change rabbits and squirrels, yes. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those. Please keep them coming. Now, we all know that shooting is inclusive, but what obstacles has Jamie Chandler been through to get his shotgun certificate? Jamie Chandler, the shooter with no hands, is a natural comedian. It was brilliant. We turned up. No, there it is. It's funny. And I said, um, I said to him, look, um, mate, yeah, really sorry. It's the first time I've ever asked because it is a bit of a weird question. Can you just do up my jacket zip for me? Yeah. Isn't that normal? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoping just that there's some form of degree of competency involved. And so for about, what was it, five or seven minutes, right down by your, you know, your, your Johnson, um, and it was getting worse and worse and there was just this group of blokes getting walking out close. getting closer and closer <laughs> watching and all they could see is his arm going up and down furiously as he got angry with a zip it was brilliant <laughs> that makes him a great host for a morning's clay shooting we are at ej churchill in buckinghamshire one of the smartest clay grounds in the country and air gunner jamie is entertaining a couple of people from air gun manufacturer bsa who have incredibly not shot anything louder than ting pat there's a lot of love for BSA. Jack Pike has sent up some clothing for everyone to wear. I've got one out of six, just clipped to the one. I'm shooting a little bit over apparently, so, uh, but, uh, but yeah, good fun. I expected more of a kick than, uh, than, than I got. One out of six is good. Even hardened pro Jamie is struggling. On the kiss. Over the top, sorry. Yep. How many guests? Yeah, that's, that's better. better. It's having a good effect on another guest yeah. from BSA. Very much so. It's been great. For instructor John, a lot of it is in inspiring confidence, and that, he says, comes from cartridge choice. EJ Churchill uses exclusively game ball cartridges for both its clay shooting and the game shoots it organises. Oh, the game ball ones, we mainly stick on to the ground. It's 21, they've got 24 and they've got 28. It depends on who's using them, especially if a lady, slight lady, might want to slide a car as well. Mainly, see that the person is getting the accuracy they want from a car or if they don't, they change car 
and it's better if you stick with one cartridge you like all the time stick with it and it will come all together another guest here today is sporting shooter magazine editor dom holton yes shooting can be expensive by the time you bought a lovely shotgun all the matching gear to go with it you've joined a shooting club or a game shooting syndicate yes it can be expensive very expensive however as demonstrated today for a few quid you can turn up with no equipment no prior experience no shotgun certificate and come to an environment where you've got experts who'll tell you how to be safe pointing in the right direction and as we've seen this morning get everybody hitting plenty of clays you know it is remarkably accessible there are clay grounds all around the country close to civilization you know lovely venues great facilities you're not slumming it you're not stuck in a field you're not cold um, and and because you're in a group going around it's also a very sociable sport as well it is while i'm talking to dom that i'm savaged <laughs> by garden machinery when i was when i was a kid i was watching tomorrow's world i thought the future would be a bit more exciting than that <laughs> A really slow lawnmower trying to take your legs off. <laughs> now this is EJ Churchill, so don't be too surprised if a star or two is shooting here. Former motoring journalist Dom spots one and practically mugs him for an interview. So we've got F1 superstar Valtteri Bottas, who uh, he's, he's been in the magazine before. We know he's a bit of a shooting fan. And you've been here with Beretta and you've got quite a special gun with you here, Valtteri. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so this is my DT11, which uh, I got end of last year. Um, went to the Beretta factory, got it fitted. So, yeah, yeah I really love it. I shoot well, well with it. Yeah. And uh, just a bit of, bit of fun today and a bit of... Um, Photos for, for Beretta, Mr. with Mr. Uh, uh, Sir Sir Tracy Stewart. And does he still shoot as well as he used to? Yeah, he still got it. Yeah. <laughs> He's still pretty good. So really impressed. And is this is this um, just a relaxation for you? The, the shooting is this what you do to kind of switch off and get away from the press? Obviously, apart from today when you've been hijacked in the car park. Yeah, it is just. Uh, I think it's really important to have things that you, you can really think about completely something else than uh, what you normally do. So this, I find it a great way to relax mentally, yeah. to do, do other things, and I just love it. And uh, But I'm, I'm a bit too competitive. I always want to improve and want to do better. Did he mention Sir Jackie Stewart? He did, and here he is, being threatened by that lawnmower. Oh no, I, I don't think shooting's difficult to get into at all. There's so many shooting schools now, clay target shooting. Uh, I started with my clay pigeon shooting long before I did any game shooting. And um, in fact, I did it long before I was a racing driver. I was a competitive shooter. So my shooting life has been forever, really. My grandfather was a gamekeeper. My father was a great shot and a great angler. So um, I've been shooting all my life almost. They're here with Franco Beretta, one of the bosses of the famous gum company. Naturally, with Beretta, uh, we think uh, that uh, uh, shooting uh, is uh, a great experience uh, of uh, the life uh, of uh, any person, men and women, because this is one of the good things that we are seeing in a lot of parts of the world, that a lot of women uh, are approaching uh, our, uh, our industry, our, uh, our passion. And so uh, we love this uh, because until uh, some time ago maybe it was seen as the men's club. Uh, now, on the contrary, everybody. Women taking up shooting. Well, this is EJ Churchill and who should we spot in a corner of the cafe but one of the UK's top women shooters here for a practice. BBC Young Sports Personality of the Year, Amber Hill. I was 10 years old when I started, so but I'd never even heard of the sport, but my granddad used to do it a bit on and off just at the weekend for purely just to, for some fun with his friends so I decided to come along with him and I don't didn't actually realize how many shooting grounds there are which were actually very local to me but I suppose it's just where to actually start with the sport with with something you've never actually heard about. Shooting is generally easy to get into but Jamie had some problems. Like most people you start you know, with your father showing you how to work you know, and uh, taking you out and uh, uh, 20 ball AYA side by side, which is a wonderful introduction, although difficult because of the uh, double triggers and the bruising it used to cause on my hand, which I never could tell my dad about, so I always felt quite bad considering his enthusiasm. But then as I got older uh, and started looking into getting my own shotgun certificate, I had a few teething problems, shall we say, um, over t oh, 25 years, um, based on uh, a misconception, uh, mainly by very well-meaning members of the police force, etc., giving me advice saying it's not worth trying, you've got no hands, it's a, secure, yeah, a risk of some sort. Um, 
and my own naivety, uh, which is odd because I don't really suffer that terribly, but um, having people wonder, or yeah, believing this to be actually true, um, which it's not. Um, and so I you know, sought advice, got told by the police, no, it's not worth it. Um, this is going back a few years. Um, and then seeking advice from you know, shooting organisations and being told, again, you can see what they're talking about, it is quite risky. Basically being forced by my brothers into applying for a shotgun certificate when they bought me a shotgun. So I actually had to go through the process. If people in authority, or people who should hold authority, say to you, no, you can't. You believe them. Now I believe that not everybody knows everything. Jamie even finds shooters who get it wrong. They will come jogging over to speak to one of my uh, co-shooters and remind them of how difficult it is for me to do something. Or, I think my, my favourite worst one, it has to be, is when I'm having a lousy day, I can't hit goose for anything, and people come up to me and pat me on the shoulder and go, well done. And they mean it sincerely, but I've just done the most lousy thing here. I've had the most lousy day shooting ever. You know, using a, a non-adapted gun uh, with a, you know, the trigger, uh, trigger guard being my resting place is actually quite unusual and they can't figure out how they do it because obviously they're holding for it. Back on the ground with the BSA gang and one of Jamie's mates has brought along a BSA shotgun. It grabs Simon's attention. Uh, well, it's uh, an old BSA side-by-side. -side. Yeah. Not quite sure of the model. It's been in the family for a couple of generations. It, it looks around about 1920s, so they're maybe a bit older, possibly. But, uh... I think it probably is from the dating I've gone on, done online, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was my father's. He was never much of a shot, to be honest, yeah. which probably explains why it's in good nick, because uh, it was never taken out of the cabinet. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I just, I never used to go on with side by sides, but I just picked it up, shot well, and I've refused to use anything else since. Yeah, you know, I've got bretters in the cabinet and all sorts. Really, but I love this thing. Fantastic. I think it's absolutely great. Yeah, yeah. I need to go get it refurbed soon. I think. Is Simon inspired to restart BSA shotgun making? Well, I think it's something I've got to uh, put to, towards my MD, and uh, I think it could be uh, uh, back on track in a, in a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. Lisa, can you confirm that BSA plans to take on Beretta? No comment. <laughs> no, thought not. Details of all the companies we referenced in this film's description. But most important, if you know someone who wants to take up shooting and who hasn't yet tried it, just tell them it's easy. I always have a theory that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Interesting news from the British gun trade there. Now from homegrown guns and me in Israel, let's go to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. A Roebuck season is well underway in Europe. Hans-Jürgen Kirstein sends in this film of the first day of the Roebuck season in Denmark. He has a client, and his client gets a nice Kalbach. Going back in time, or forward in time if you're looking forward to the rut, Pedro de Ampuero sends in his film of bow hunting Roebuck during the rut, just out on YouTube. And Tex Grabner, yes, the guy who shot himself, sends in this film of what he calls prehistoric bow fishing adventure. He's on a small river in Illinois, USA, after peculiar looking garfish. You don't need to speak Japanese to understand this film about fox shooting in the Far East. As he says in Google Translate, North Fox Harmful Wildlife Extermination Quota added. Got it? Nor do you need to speak French for Chasse Ragondin. He is hunting Nutria or Koi Poo with a tutu in France. Sounds like an old vacuum cleaner, but Dusty Phillips is a hunter and his Ibex trip to Turkey is spectacular. On a smaller scale but no less sporting Slingshot Community Forum posts this film of three squirrels shot with a catapult on a farm. He started by trapping the animals, but the farmer made it clear he was happy for slingshots to be used. Good shots and good farmer. And finally, this is unusual. A group of TV hosts called Boneyard Brotherhood are shooting feral boar on a 45,000 acre ranch in eastern Oregon when most of the sounder charges. Don't know about you, but I reckon their cameraman legs it. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you don't like any of those and this lot of walking away, why not check out George Digweed's new Club Digweed? On this month's Club Digweed, George explains how to make the most of a promatic trap. With a single setup, he shows how you can practice multiple targets by working around it. He then explains the best way of attacking this fast, flat crossing bird at 10 to 40 yards. Now, because we're further back and the target is going to appear flatter in the sky, 
I'm going to keep my gun lower. Also in the show, George tries to get some trade secrets out of CCI boss Johnny Goodhart and talks through an extraordinary month from charity events to championships. His score was a, a, a very deserving score and worthy of winning the final. It's all on Club Digweed. Go to georgedigweed.com to see how to join and watch the show. And George's instructional stuff is downloadable on his website. Please subscribe to our channel. Please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or pop your email address into the constant contact box, and we'll constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain. It's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. Mazel tov, and goodbye.